This is the transmission assembly out of a General Electric top loader washing machine. I'll have the uh, part number and unit number in the um, description and title. But what I wanted to do with this is open it up and show the workings of it. This assembly is quote unquote unserviceable and as far as interior parts go that's more or less correct you'll see in a minute and the bottom part is the brake slash clutch there's already a really good video on YouTube um, that shows disassembling and reassembling repairing that so so I won't duplicate that work I'll just put a link to that video in the description below so it's not a sealed unit fortunately there's six bolts here and there's a counterweight here to offset the weight of the gears on this side because when you're in spin cycle this whole thing is re rotating so that balances the weight out I've already disassembled and cleaned this prior to the video that it contains gear oil and it is normally filled by that plug right there and then it's sealed together with RTV sealant so I'm just going to fill it pouring it out of the bottle into the case and then seal it off and put it back together there's not a gasket in there it's RTV only So after you break the seal, the top part comes off with let's see if the camera's showing this. I'll pull the camera off. The interior shaft will stay in for the moment. So this will lift up off of that shaft. That's what we look like on the inside. Now this uh, output shaft here, this is the part that works the agitator. It, it'll just lift right out of there and you'll see that there's a nylon spacer right here and that'll just slide out like so. It has a ridge on the top so it only goes in one way. And then this shaft will lift right out. Check the bottom of that because there's a ball bearing right there. So it could be stuck on either side when the oil's in here. And that's the lower shaft. So that ball bearing is the only thing separating the upper and lower shaft. They actually ride on each other but do not directly connect. So that's just got a little half gear or a third gear on it. This assembly in here contains this brass part and it just lifts off of that gear. It's a, an eccentric hub so it's off to the side so it actually works that brass piece back and forth as it's spinning from the input shaft down here. Then this also lifts straight out. and this is what you have left and that ball bearing is just sitting in there now this lower shaft you can pull out if you have the clutch assembly removed on this and I'll have to pull that nut off right there so let me pull that and get right back to you so that's the clutch assembly that's that nut I just took off and normally the pulley for the drive belt would be between that clutch assembly and that nut. But now that the clutch assembly and that nut is off, this drive shaft can live, lift straight out of there. And it has two spacers. Let me try to get that other one out of there. It has two spacers and a needle bearing in the center. 
So that's the needle bearing there, and there's the two spacers. That's more or less it for removable parts, unless you were to go as far as to press out that bushing. And I think it's in this one here. It has a brass bushing, an oil light type bushing right there. There's the bottom of the uh, drain, or not the drain, but the fill plug right there. There's a, a lip seal here for uh, keeping the gear oil inside and keeping the water from getting inside the gear oil. And there's a seal in there as well. And this is the lower bearing, but that, that's also covered in that other video I mentioned. So check out his video if you wanted to disassemble and service the lower half of this. The uh, counterweight here just slides right out. It's just a block of steel with a rubber bushing on it. So when you reassemble, most of it is self-aligning. We'll start by, oh, there's also a nylon spacer right here on the gear. It just lifts off. But you put the gear back in, like so. I think I did it like this last time. Most of it does self-align. There is one piece you have to watch, but it would help if I put the uh, input shaft back in first. So here's the part, the only real part that needs to be aligned is there's a specific number of teeth there and on this as well. So you don't want to have this off to one side or the other too far or it's going to bind. So center that and then put those teeth, that center tooth right in the middle on that ball bearing and you're right where you want to be. Then you get that other housing, and like I said, when I go to reassemble this, I'm just going to pour the fluid in here, top it off, and then put a bead of silicone around it. And then you put the top housing on. Like so. So, to test it, all you're really doing is turning that lower shaft and if everything's lined up and working perfect, this will work like an agitator. You'll spin that nut down below, it'll go one way, pause, go the other way. And the whole time you're turning the nut below in the same direction. You're not reversing your direction. going both ways and there's no binding at all it's real smooth and all I'm doing is turning that lower nut clockwise with my other hand so that is how you properly assemble that uh, obviously unfortunately if you have broken parts in there you're not going to be able to buy these individually because it was made as a non-serviceable unit, so these parts are not for sale individually. The intention is for you to remove the entire transmission assembly and replace it. So if anything in here is broken, um, your only real luck is going to be either A, to find a used unit, or B, maybe it's broken in a place that you can fix it. You know, maybe it can be brazed and ground down or, you know, whatever you have to do. But... As long as there's oil in there, it probably should last almost indefinitely unless there's a failure somewhere else in the machine that causes a binding and, you know, breaks the teeth off the brass fitting or something like that. And when you're in spin cycle, the whole unit spins, like I said. So that's where that bottom bearing comes in there. 
So I hope that was either interesting or helpful. I couldn't find this kind of information anywhere on the internet, so I'll throw this out there. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. As kind of an addendum here, though, I realized I, I glossed over the gear oil side of this. I do not know what the factory calls for. It most definitely was gear oil. You can tell by the horrible stench that it puts out. It wasn't a real thick viscosity, so I'm assuming it's one of the lighter ones, you know, like 75, 90, or 80, 90. This is what I have, so it's going in there. These aren't, um, I'm sure it's not real critical anyhow. The important thing is, is just to have oil in there. So I wanted to add that. So all I'm going to do is pour it in there until it's almost to the top. I don't want to get to the top because it could interfere with the uh, sealant when I'm putting it together. I'm going to call that good right there. Okay, now I'm going. Later. Some of you may have noticed that I forgot to put that bushing in there. Fortunately, I noticed it too before I put the top back on. But it's just this nylon bushing here. It's got a lip on one side, so that goes up and towards the back. And that just takes up the, the slack in that gear. And it can only go in one way, so if it's in there like that, you got it good. Third time's a charm. Thank you.